Hello, and welcome to another one of our Fogtown behind the scenes diaries. We've had a really excellent month of developments on this, from doing a great panel at the Rose City Comic Con to a really fun appearance on the Adventure Game Hotspot's uh, anniversary live stream to talk about the Fogtown video game we're making. But the most important thing is that we are really deep into production of our pilot episode for the TV series, which we hope will be done by the end of this year and it is going really well. For those who don't remember how our videos looked when we started this whole endeavor in our like crowdfunding videos, uh, those were a much more humble affair than what we're up to now. In those clips, we were doing mostly pre-rendered still frame backgrounds. Uh, we were not using Unreal, very little if any of it was done in real time. And the puppets themselves were a lot simpler. Uh, only one axis of motion from side to side. Uh, they could not do this or this or, you know, really any other kind of movement. But now, uh, our puppets have been redesigned. They have an entire new axis of movement, meaning that they can nod, they can kind of swing their heads diagonally and, you know, anything in between. And we are doing proper virtual production using Unreal 5, and it's looking really cool. We're actually going far beyond the visual fidelity that I thought that we would be getting at this stage. Every day that we get on set, it feels like we are learning something new that really like ups the quality. And today, I think we got some of our best footage yet and also some of the most complicated shots yet. We'll have a lot to show soon, uh, but for now, I mainly wanted to do just a little walkthrough of what it took to get one of the most complicated shots of potentially this entire pilot. So for this scene, we have Sherblock walking across the room to approach his corkboard of clues. We have the camera doing a funky little rotation as it dollies into its position so that Sherblock crosses from right to left in the screen, which helps us kind of reset our 180 degree line from a previous cut. In order to do a shot like that, we can't only just move the actual camera, we have to move the virtual camera in Unreal in a similar manner. And today we did not have a tracking setup to do that automatically for us, so we had to do it manually and synchronize them to the best of our ability. Complicating it uh, are a number of things. We have to do a rec focus on the lens. So as the camera is sliding, we are changing our focus from uh, a Bluetooth follow focus uh, app. In order to get good focus, we have to get consistent placement with our puppets, which means making marks that we hit uh, during the shot at the specific times. And then because the entire virtual world is rotating, the actual primary light source of the scene, which is the, the big bay windows leading into their apartment, they shift about 90 degrees in the shot, which means for this to look correct, we also need to just shift our real light that's lighting up the puppets that same 90 degrees. So our gaffer for the day, Duncan, had to actually physically walk that light in tandem with the camera move um, to make that look realistic. And then because we just thought we wanted to make this extra difficult uh, for the heck of it, <laughs> We also realized that it would be a great moment for Sherblock to toss a prop. Uh, in this moment, he's reading a letter, he finishes reading it, he gets the information he needs from it, so he doesn't need it anymore, so what's he gonna do? Something flamboyant, like toss it! Making a puppet toss things is not a trivial matter. Uh, it's very finicky, especially with the, with, with the scale of puppets that we have. Um, but we were able to get it to work by just putting that paper into his hand as lightly as we could with his thumb like holding it down so it wouldn't fall out prematurely but not so firmly that it would stay put if we gave it some real force. It was a heck of a lot of work, many takes, but we finally got it. Uh, we were so happy with it. <laughs> Getting a shot like that, seeing it come together, uh, it's so rewarding. It's such a cathartic moment for the crew. It makes doing these complicated things that, you know, will only be appreciated for a couple of seconds in the final result feel so much more worth it. And here is our end result. Info and identity of Mothnapper. Monday, Pie Palace, 6 p. <laughs> of course! Another really fun and very complicated shot that we got recently was one that involved Sherblock drawing with a pen on his corkboard. 
we wanted to do a POV from the cork board looking at him with an actual like mark being made, you know, on the, the lens, in this case, a piece of glass protecting our real lens from marking. But we weren't really sure exactly how we were gonna pull this off. A few days ago, I assumed that we would give it our best shot, but probably ultimately switch over to some sort of a digital composite where we were not actually making a mark, but just digitally overlaying, you know, a layer of the drawn elements. The Sherblock was pantomiming a drawing on the glass. I was extremely pleased when we actually found a way to do it for real. Yes, this is Sherblock with a homemade marker that's made out of a Q-tip dipped in blue paint and we are having him actually draw <laughs> with a marker. We are making a tiny puppet ink up a piece of glass in a big old scribble and I just think that is the coolest thing. <laughs> We have had such an incredible time these last few weeks, ramping up production, growing the team, getting things like really, really, really moving uh, at last on this pilot. And I am just so, so pleased with the way that this is all working and integrating uh, go that goes beyond my expectations. Um, there are shots that I know exactly how we pulled them off that I can look at and my brain is still tricked and I don't know where the real props end and the virtual space begins. And that just makes me really, really excited about this tech and how we can push it even further as we learn more and more and get more familiar with the process. And soon we shall teach you uh, some tips uh, of what we think are best practices for doing virtual production at this very miniature scale. Thank you for watching. Uh, please follow along if you haven't already, and we cannot wait to show you what comes next. Stay tuned. Ta-ta!